video, we'll try to explain the difference between hydrophobic and hydrophilic in the context of outdoor insulators. So in outdoor insulators, basically we have two main types. The first one, we call it ceramic insulators. That is either made from porcelain or made from, from glass. And those uh, material we, uh, utilities, they have long history of usage and they are very, very stable material. However, they have what we call a poor contamination performance and what we refer to it as a hydrophilic behavior. So what is hydrophilic and how this will lead to a poor contamination performance? In a simple language, because these materials, they have what we call high surface energy. So if a water droplet come in contact with the surface, they tend to have a very small contact angle. You call this is a contact angle. Okay, so if we have multiple of those water droplets, then we'll start to con connect with each other until we have one full wetting layer on the surface of these insulators. Okay, so what is the consequence of this? Now, as we know, outdoor insulators, they are in outdoor conditions where pollution start to accumulate on the, on the surface. And many of those uh, pollutants, especially if the insulators are close to the sea, they have uh, salt in them. So this salt with the availability of humidity, drizzle, or any wetting mechanism will start to dissolve forming an electrolyte. Now imagine a high voltage insulators energized from end, one end grounded at the other and an electrolyte on the surface. This is a perfect environment for a leakage current to happen on the, on the surface as we can see here. Now this leakage current can evolve to have a complete flashover which will cause interruption to the power system or can cause severe damage to the to the insulators. So this is what we mean by hydrophilic. Now, what is hydrophobic? Hydrophobic happens in the other class of insulators, which we call them non-ceramic insulators, especially made from silicon rubber. And those insulators can come in two different forms, either as a full insulator like here, or as a coating. So this is a glass insulator that is coated with the, what we call room temperature vulcanized or RTV of silicon rubber. So when we have this material, as you can see here that the water droplets, they don't come in contact with each other. Why? This is what we call it the hydrophobic behavior. So this material has a hydrophobic behavior, which is a result of the opposite of the ceramic insulators. The surface energy is very, very low. So if there's a water droplet comes into the surface, will result in a very high contact angle, as you can see here. So you will have discrete water droplets that they are not connected with each other. So there is no wetting uh, area. So there is no path for the leakage current. And if we have both ceramic and non-ceramic insulators at the same conditions, Okay, under the same wetting conditions at, at the same high voltage. And we want to monitor how long it will take the leakage current to start to deliver, develop on the surface. For the ceramic insulator, it will start almost immediately. Why? Because of the hydrophilic nature, you will have a, a complete wetting, then the current start to uh, develop. But for non-ceramic insulators, no. It will stay for a long time before any leakage current starts to develop until the material loses its hydrophobicity. And how this happens, we'll talk about that in a different, a different video. Then it will start to uh, develop. So hydrophobic surface is something desired. It's something very good and it will lead to a very good uh, pollution uh, performance. Uh, let's go to the lab now and I will show you uh, a demonstration on uh, ceramic versus non-ceramic insulators and coated insulators when they are subjected to wetting. What do we mean by hydrophilic and what we mean by hydrophobic? Uh,
In this video, we'll demonstrate the difference between hydrophobic and hydrophilic surface. So in front of us here, this is a, post, a porcelain insulator. So I will come here and spray it with water. And let's have a closer look. You see the water? The water has a like continuous path on its surface because the surface is hydrophilic. If we look to a cap and bin glass insulator, let's do the same thing, see here. The surface also hydrophilic and you have continuous path for the for the water now let's do the same thing but for coated ceramic insulator so when you see the coated one come close see that the water droplets are far from each other and this shows the hydrophobic nature of the surface and if we do the same thing for full polymer insulator and again come closer here if you look again the same thing you can see the surface here that the water droplets are apart from each other again because of the hydrophobic nature